inside the updated Subaru Crosstrek. Now there are four trim levels for this, which I'll cover in the shop some of the details, but the price spans out from very affordable to around 23,000 past 30 if you start adding a whole bunch of crazy stuff on. But the point is you can find one that matches your budget and you don't feel like they're cheaping out everywhere. This is the limited trim. This is a press car. So they try to show you everything that's possible with this. The interior space is a great mix of modern and past Subaru. I talk about this a lot. Keeping things that have always worked, which basically you get in here and you know exactly what everything does. There's no guesswork. You still have physical volume knobs, tuning knobs, your HVAC controls are all physical. They haven't gone crazy here and given you the 50 inch plasma across the dash, dash where you have to touch everything. This is a great balance of usability, non-intimidation factor, and good seating comfort. Tons of glass in here. You can see out this thing. And there's a ton of places to put stuff. I carry this huge water bottle. Well, it doesn't really hold a lot of water, but water, but it, it, it's a big piece. Fits in the door, fits in the armrest, fits everywhere I need it to. I can jam a ton of stuff in here. It's something, it's a vehicle for somebody that needs it for utility purposes. And that doesn't mean it's a U-Haul truck in terms of like quality either. There are hard plastics, but they don't look horrific. The door card, for example, a door panel, there's hard plastics where your feet are at. So when you kick the door, you're not going to destroy it, but there's soft touch material in the handles. The leathers on the door look nice. There's the kind of the faux carbon fiber that blends in with the aesthetic, the silver of the car. And I think they did a really good job balancing all of this out. Now I was out of the, I was in the Outback Onyx trim where they add like green stitching and all of that. And just trying to tart it up even more. This doesn't have that, but they do have this orange stitching, which is great for October. And there are some copper accents in the gauge cluster. I mean, they just, they've tried here. And I think that's the main point. It doesn't feel like a bargain basement type vehicle and it is completely usable. The hatch space is great. There's a ton of room to put stuff without making this feel like it is a barge. It doesn't feel like a massive car. You can still get it around easy and it's practical. That's the main thing. And when you're looking at a price or the price point that this is at, you realize this is what most people are going to use and enjoy for the long term. But let's get into the underbody segment. I'm going to talk a little bit about what makes this cross truck unique. Time to do a quick shop segment on the Subaru Crosstrek. If you've watched these videos, you'll know there's a big complaint I have with all these cars is they're so expensive to the point I don't know how anybody can afford them anymore. And if it's bad in the United States, you know it's gotta be worse around the rest of the globe. But this starts around 22,000 for the base and underneath, mechanically, it's all very similar. Now here's the differences. The lower trim level, the base and the premium get a two liter naturally aspirated motor that makes about 155 horsepower. You can get a CVT or a six speed manual. When you go up to the sport and the limited, you get a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated motor that makes around 180 horsepower, but it's CVT only. Underneath, and this is where they save a lot of the costs, it's all steel. Everything is steel on this car. There's no weight saving. There's no compo crazy composites or aluminum panels everywhere. Strut front. And they do, compared to Subaru in the past, they do a good job with covering up as much of the underbody as they can with plastic panels to reduce NVH to keep a lot of the debris off the steel and the metals. But let's take a look at the back and I'll detail the rest. The rear half of the Crosstrek, some carryover stuff here. It's all steel, no aluminum. At this price point, who cares? You have double wishbone suspension, something that Subaru has used on the rear half of most of their cars and SUVs. And there is a ton of space to move around here. If you ever need to do work, easy to get at everything. The other thing that I noticed is just putting this on the lift, how much ground clearance this has. And although it looks like it has car-like proportions, that's something Subaru does great. They give you a ton of space to go off-roading. And I've had some of these products off-road in trails where some smaller SUVs had problems. And that's something that these are great with, namely for the price. So let's talk about some of the all-wheel drive stuff. The upper two trim levels, the Sport and the Limited, give you the ability to lock 
do a four wheel drive lock, which just means it's able to send or split the power to the back and to the front simultaneously for short periods of time to get you out of ruts. And that's something that you don't get on the two lower trim levels. The other thing that it adds is hill descent control, again, on the upper two trim levels. So if you're coming down a huge grade, you enable that and the car will break itself as it goes downhill to maintain stability, which is nice if you're in any type of elevation. The last thing to talk about is this does have torque vectoring by brake. All trim levels get that. So it helps it to helps the, the vehicle to turn in a little bit better if you're cornering. And again, it's all electronic tricks that most manufacturers are implementing. But the big thing, the symmetrical all wheel drive, that's what they market it as. What that means is all the half shafts, your axles here are all equal length front and rear. And what it gives you is a more balanced handling characteristic. And also when you're applying power and turning, you don't get torque steer like some of the front wheel drive cars that try to retrofit all wheel drive like the CRVs, like the new Mazda products have some of that with their turbos. So this feels more natural to drive and it was designed from the start to be all wheel drive, not front wheel drive first. So that's why so many people like it and it is a very tried and true system. I say that about every Subaru. If there's one thing you never hear problems with with Subarus, is their all wheel drive setup. But anyway, let's get this out on the road and see how it drives. Setting off in the Subaru Crosstrek. Let's see how this gets off the line. So, the CVT and the naturally aspirated 2.5 liter is basically adequate. It's a little sluggish to get off the line and this is typical with CVTs. This is not one of the reasons why you're gonna be excited to buy the Crosstrek. It definitely has a more sedate acceleration pattern and most people that don't get in and out of hundreds of cars like we do anymore, they're probably not even gonna notice the fact that it's a CVT. It does have fake shifts and we'll leave it at that. The engine is a little bit rattly, but it's not, it's exactly what you expect from a four cylinder engine. It is not the most refined thing, but where this makes up for some of that is ride quality is superb. This is a very well controlled and dampened car or damped car. The suspension has plenty of wheel travel. So if I just happen to fall asleep and Eh, just go onto the shoulder. You basically don't even notice it. The isolation that it does in terms of body control and damping, you can hit something over there and you don't feel it transmit. You don't feel the vibration transmit all the way through the seat in your driver's side. So it does well over potholes. It does well over bad pavement. And you can take this on trails on anything like it's nothing. And the fact that it has a legitimate ride height and tons of road clearance for something like this is just icing on the cake so it's definitely on the softer side this is a more hey let's be calm and get to where we need to go from point a to point b in terms of steering feel and isolation and all that stuff it doesn't transmit a ton through the steering wheel which you don't want in a car like this the steering is pretty quick it's not that's one area that's not super slowed down it still gives you good reactivity even though you have the extra ride height it doesn't feel like a total boat it doesn't feel like you're going to roll over and some of this is thanks to double wishbone in the rear it maintains a good balance so what's left well fuel economy is average i mean uh, i'm not getting better than around 26 27 miles per gallon and for a four cylinder you expect a little bit more but you make up for that with the all-wheel drive system feels very neutral so when you're on a day-to-day -day grind like right now i'm just going to be a dick It has that little safe understeer to it. So the front end washes out, but it's controlled when it sends the power to the back and it still makes this pretty enjoyable to drive. It always maintains this safeness, which I really like in a price point like this. You can still drive a little bit. It's not totally dead and it doesn't bore you to, <laughs> it just doesn't bore you to death driving. And I think that's what I'm trying to get across. Visibility is great. I talked about that on the interior space. There's plenty of glass. I, I don't constantly have to double check out my shoulder to make sure 
that somebody's not there. You see it. And the combination of that and the, the eyesight system, which is Subaru safety suite, it works really well in here. It does cool tricks, like if there's a car in front of you at a stoplight and you're on your phone or doing things you're not supposed to, it will beep and let you know the car moved in front of you. The blind spot monitoring works well. All the little things that it needs to do on a basic level are very functional and it adds value to having a car like this that is extremely affordable that you're gonna use every day. And I think, you know, it's not perfect. You know, it doesn't feel overly refined. It's not a refined driving car, but it balances the, the practicality and usability. The ride quality is its best suit and usability in terms of suspension travel, the ability to take it in bad climates, snow, ruts, some off-road. That's why you buy this along with the fact that you can stuff a ton of shit in here. And I think now is a good time to get into the final thoughts and talk about the pros and the cons. Final thoughts on the Subaru Crosstrek. It's not a big surprise here. There's a lot to like. There's a lot to like because your average Joe Blow can go and afford this. You can use it year round in pretty much every climate. Snow, salt, hailstorms, fire and brimstone. This thing should do what you need it to do without any fanfare. Most of the technology is average, but it's functional. It's not that distracting and it does aid in helping you pay more attention or not pay attention in some cases. So I think there's a couple takeaways. The negatives for me are definitely drivetrain. The two liter is weak. The 2.5 liter isn't much better and the CVT definitely dumbs down the entire experience. It is however shocking to me that they offer a manual transmission. Granted, it's only on the first lower two trim levels, but at least that's there. That would make this more engaging if you're somebody that enjoys driving. Now, other than that, I mean, Subaru is Subaru. You either love these things or you don't, but I think they find a great balance between the budget, the budget end without feeling like a total turd, and then they can tart it up just a little bit so you feel like there's good creature comforts. It's just feels well-built for a Subaru. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>